Let's pick up on this with Dr. Stephen Nash from Fig Securities. Dr. Nash, good morning to you now. Uh, seems that Moody's is of the view, and correct if I'm wrong here, that we face structural uh, risks in this economy and the financial system. We have those superannuation savings that aren't flowing in the direction where they should do. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is to say to, uh, well, to be propping up banks by going into uh, into bonds for instance well look um, you know the question the you know the statement should it, you know, I, I should be qualified there I think there's been a lot of resistance uh, from superannuation industry about you know a mandatory direction towards fixed income um, I think the the, uh, the idea is that there's a lot of education that has to be done on a fixed income and um, over time people will realize the benefits of fixed income particularly the way it offsets your equity um, risk in, the, in your portfolio. Hopefully, um, also I think the taxation aspect has to be addressed in the sense that uh, fixed income gets taxed a lot more than equity, so it tends to distort your asset allocation um, decision. So um, I think the, the idea is not to force people to buy fixed income. It's not about the banks, it's about the portfolio and, and getting a, a more stable portfolio. Do you think the concerns that Moody's highlighted then, do they, um, are they mitigated over time then? We know that they're trying to reduce their reliance on offshore funding and there are plans afoot for um, a, a more established bond market here? Um, yeah, uh, going forward, yeah, I, I think the, uh, the risk will be mitigated. In terms of the bond market reaction, it was really uh, no reaction in terms of the CDS market. Everything was trading much the same as it was before. I think one development that could uh, improve things would hopefully be a, a longer Commonwealth market. The uh, Commonwealth issued a new uh, 2023 uh, yesterday. Uh, again, that's the longest bond we've got. It's only a 12-year bond. Now, hopefully we can <coughs> move that out with a, some sort of plan to get uh, a 20-year market started. If that was to start, then uh, we could also see semi-governments issuing in the longer part of the curve, and that also would increase swap activity in that part of the curve and then bring these uh, bank issues longer in terms of maturity. So I think that would be a really good development. It's not going to happen immediately. It needs a plan. Hopefully uh, something can be done on that. The thing is, Moody's flagged a possible downgrade back in February. We know yeah. then cost of funding for these banks went up. So that's yeah. arguably been factored in. But what happens when there's another downturn in uh, liquidity globally? What, what, what options are the banks faced with? Uh, if there's a re reduction in liquidity, obviously spreads will blow out. I mean, we've seen what's happening in Europe is that because the peripheral countries are blowing out in spread, the, the banks that uh, that un underneath those peripheral countries are blowing out in spread. That's increasing the competition globally for Australian banks. However, um, of recent times there has been some quite large issues by some of the major banks. Uh, it tends to suggest there's more acceptance of the, of the banks here and, and that they can do larger size. Uh, Westpac recently did an issue over two billion dollars. It was a very large issue, and it was quite uh, priced quite well, I think. You still acknowledge, though, that, that we're running a, a current account deficit. The banks, therefore, remain vulnerable, yeah. uh, short to medium term. Yes. What do you expect the reaction of hedge funds to this news to be today? Um, look, it, I think it's re it, as, as I said before. I think it's in terms of fixed income markets. <laughs> It's really an alignment of the rating with other rating agencies. Moody's were a bit slow to downgrade the banks. Outlook's stable. I don't think there's really much to be said. I think the key variable for the banks in terms of hedge funds would be um, what's going on with property prices. I think that's the real risk for any of the banks or the major banks. At the moment, uh, property prices are, I suppose you could describe it as being quite stable. They're not going up and they're not going down. Uh, the clearance rate around 50% supports that view. Um, I think with the recent talk of a rate increase, that uh, property market uh, sentiment is deteriorating a little bit, but it hasn't fallen apart. So I think that's the main variable for hedge funds. Yeah. So would you agree with the bank's response then, which was that in fact interest rate rises pose the bigger threat um, to the outlook than actually that credit rating change? Yeah, I think um, yeah the interest rate uh, outlook or the, or the threat of a rise was reflected, I think, even in the uh, Westpac consumer confidence numbers. Uh, uh, where <coughs> certain subsect sectors of that indicated that uh, people are concerned about a possible rise of interest rates. It, it, it tends to show that families are quite stressed right now and that any um, increase in rates is going to really going to impact um, sentiment going forward. Hmm.
Let's talk about the Fed's response overnight. We saw the US dollar rally. Uh, what are you reading into that? Is that just a short term uh, signal or when the reality of no quantitative easing sinks in, markets will perhaps reverse that, that direction? Well, look, there's been a bit of concern in the US market recently uh, about what happens when QE2 finishes. Now, there's been a bit of a, a rise in issuance uh, by, um, by uh, corporates in the US where the idea is well, they want to get in front of the QE2 ending and they, they expect rates to go up. Um, there's been a bit of an acceleration in corporate bond issuance. Uh, my view is that uh, there won't be any major disruption as a result of the end of QE2. I think a lot of participants are expecting some sort of interim measure after QE2 to, to assist with the transition away from that. Um, you know, on the other side, investors are investing in these bonds. They're not they are, they're not uh, silly, they're expecting that uh, growth will be low for longer, so that's why they're investing in these securities. And, and c corporates are getting away these issues at, at very low spreads to treasuries. Yeah, but you look at the, uh, the price action overnight, those yields pushing higher, yeah. so equity markets continue to rally, there's still this ongoing competition. Well, um, yeah, um, mm. well, with regard to that, I think, you know, in terms of the bad news we had in the last few days, treasuries rallied, but they were sort of reluctant in rallying, and when, when the equity market turned, uh, bonds sold off quite aggressively, and I think that this is all to do with this budget problem and that uh, the bond market is like any other insurance market it's building in the prospect of, a, of some sort of problem with the US or a default of some sort obviously that we, we don't expect that to happen but it's building that uh, possibility in right now but it is still seen as a slim possibility I mean are the threats I, of default I, actually even I, credible? Look, I, really, I really do think it's a, a, a quite a slim possibility right now um, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit of a, a disaster scenario, but the, the bond market is not happy with the situation and that's being reflected in yields. And so how is that reflected when we get economic data releases as well? Well, as we got those weaker economic data releases, as I said, the bond market rallied, but it seemed quite reluctant to rally. The, the rally was sort of much more tentative than the sell-off we got with the equity market rally today. So I think that's, that's what's going to happen. It, as we get... Uh, any indication of uh, positive economic, uh, economic news, the bond market will sell off. I mean, you would have expected the bond market to probably rally on those statements by the Fed, but it didn't. It, it sold off quite substantially last night. Dr. Nash, uh, briefly, what's your next, what are you eyeing next? What is going to, I guess, push uh, the, the local bond market in, into a position that you're comfortable with? Look, I think the wages numbers uh, yesterday were quite interesting, a little bit lower than expected. We've got the Awodi numbers today. <coughs> That's going to give more colour on what the wages uh, situation is. I think that is a really important aspect for, uh, for the RBA. The RBA's, RBA is concerned about the tight labour market and wages. I think this is a really central concern, so I think that's the focus right in, in terms of the bond market today. All right, so we'll look at those with interest when they break for now. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Okay. Dr. Stephen Nash from